Okay. That voice. We are live again mm -hmm. on Instagram and Facebook Live. Mm -hmm. And there's this beautiful woman. Mm -hmm. Look at her. <laughs> wearing her Insta, what is it called? Fascinator. Fascinator. Which you bought for me. Which I bought. Yeah. Yeah. He buys me hats. I do. I like buying you hats. Yes. And there's some beautiful flowers in the background. What are they? They're roses or peonies? These are roses. Not well, from you. Pink, who are they from? Oh, just for me to know. A secret admirer. Yeah. Yeah, one of many. <laughs> and here she is. Huh? Suzanne Summers. Yay! <laughs> you actually remembered to introduce me. Hi, Caroline. <laughs> hello, hello. Well, that was very nice. Yes, you bought me this hat. I thought it was so cute. And so I dressed her for, around my hat today. And the flowers match the hat. Well, and I put two different bottoms on to find the right bottom to not clash with the hat. And I think I did it. You did it. I think I fi figured it out. Yeah, you did it. I'm good at that. Yeah. I understand proportion and uh, uh, different proportions on different bodies. Who should wear what and who shouldn't wear what. I always keep it to myself, but I have that thought of, mm, they probably shouldn't have worn that. So, yeah. today, I mean, here we are in July... Almost, almost in August. Yeah. So we're at the peak of summer, and there are a lot of people who would love to lay in the sun, but they shouldn't lay in the sun because they have skin like my wife, and all they're going to do is dry it out and ruin it. Get get freckles. That's right. Well, it's beyond freckles. Yeah. It's like now yeah. it's horrid age spots. Yeah. It's I a, used to read about horrid age spots in comic books and think, what's oh, that? Yeah. Oh yeah. So today we have uh, two tanning kits, a three-piece and a five-piece, and you're going to want to you're going to want to have these because this will give you the kind of tan that you would get normally laying in the sun, relative to your skin type. It's not going to be that orange stuff or that brown stuff. This stuff is great. And you'll put that on, and you'll look like you have the most beautiful tan. It turns you the, the color that you're supposed to be. That's exactly Sugar right. Peptides. That's exactly right. Not only that, Caroline called me twice to remind me to use the, the mitts. And I'm going, well, oh, all right. I didn't know I it's wanted It's brand new. I know, it's but I didn't know new. that I would be interested in the mitts. And you know what? Here are the mitts. They're even still a little wet because I use them. Mitt. This is, mitt. This is mitt. This is this is mitts. You get two of them, Caroline. If no, you could. Mitt, you get one. You get a, it's, it's Oh, it's I didn't know that. Mitt. Oh, yeah, you only get one. one. Oh. Well, I guess that's all you need. Yeah. Well. Yeah. And you know I what? put I put the tanning serum on the mitt. I had it on both mitts, but I actually didn't use it. Come to think of it, and I put it all over my face and chest and shoulders, and I wish you could see my legs. They look so tan and so uh, smooth. But the great thing was nothing on my hands. Are those orange hands? No, no. I think this is inspired. I think I will always put on the tanning serum because I didn't realize when I was putting the tanning serum on the mitt on my legs that generally I don't like putting the tanning serum on my legs. Never thought about it. It's not a big deal. It's not like the worst thing in the world, but I didn't like it. You know, uh, when I was a kid, like 18, 19, and I was living in Windsor, Ontario. I bet right you were so cute. Were you cute? Tour. Okay. Were you making and, money at 18 and 19? Yes. I had a buddy by the name of Lindsay Meehan. Who yeah, you was talk a about a great him. jazz musician. Yeah. And both of us were free during the day. I had a show from 6 to 9 in the morning, and then after that I was free for the rest of the day. So something came out called Man Tan. I remember. And it was tanning <laughs> stuff. Okay? Yeah. So Lindsay and I bought, I think, two cans each. Yeah. And we got all sprayed down with this stuff, and we put it on our hands and our arms and our faces. And, How'd you look? Well, it looked really weird because nobody in Windsor had a tan. It's the middle of the winter. Especially right? an orange tan. Yeah, in the middle of the winter. And the really, the part that we didn't know, we didn't wash our hands. Oh, yeah. So our hands on yeah. the palms got tanned as well. We were the only people in Windsor with tanned palms on our hands okay well not me i have no well this is not like mantan no this is this is this turns you the yeah. color that you are supposed to be if you get tan if you get tan yeah and uh it's good for you 
okay. know, that Mantan stuff was loaded with chemicals. It was it had a bad smell. Yeah. This, well, this smells nice because it's days, normal. In those days, we didn't get into chemicals, you know. We didn't think about that. No, but they had them in them. Yeah, of course. Was, that's what... The, the chemical makers go, you know what would really turn them a nice orange color? Put some of this in there. Right. Here's what a three, what was this? Three-piece tanning kit, tanning serum, tanning mitt, healthy body glow, retail value $124.97, sale $89.99. That's 28% off nice. at SuzanneSummers.com. Nice. There it is for Instagram. Nice. The three-piece tanning kit, tanning serum, tanning mitt, healthy body glow, retail value one twenty-four ninety-seven, sale eighty-nine ninety-nine, twenty-eight percent off. Okay, that's the three-piece. Okay. Here's the five-piece. Okay. And we've added to that the desert shimmer powder oh, that's and great. the multi-stick sunrise, oh, that's great. and that's the retail great. the retail value. Is two hundred and twenty-four dollars and ninety-five cents. Sale one twenty-four. Wow, that's forty-four percent off at SuzanneSummers.com. That's the five-piece tanning kit. If I had a brush, which I forgot to bring out, to put on this um, bronzing powder, it's a nice thing to do for your hands. I know. Well, that's interesting. What? Well, putting it on your hands, I haven't thought I about know. that. Do my eyes look weird? You know, just the normal weird. I put on my eye makeup kind of quickly in my bad light in my uh, Ricky Dean makeup area in this temporary house, and I think that I might have overdone the blue. Overdone what? The blue. Um, I don't think no, so. No, you look cute. Yeah, I you do? look really okay. cute. Yeah, you look super good. I just want Alan to slightly pull up your sleeve so I can't see your bra strap. Where is it? Oh, here? there it is. Oh, Alan to the rescue. You're good. You're good at that. <laughs> don't, don't make a move. I'm coming. <laughs> I'm coming. I want the okay. world to know. Okay. Uh, thank you. Okay, now she's perfect. Okay. Perfect. He's perfect. And look at that, look at that shoulder. It's a beautiful shoulder. <laughs> I actually have two of them. Yeah, you haven't lived till you've seen this shoulder. This is a beautiful shoulder. <laughs> and whenever I see it, I kiss it. Mm -hmm. Ooh. It's for real. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Lucky be, me. There'll be a little something for you later after the show. Oh, good. Okay. Good. Okay. I have a little something for you later oh, okay. after the show. Okay, I'm glad. You want to know what it is? Sure. We're having crispy chicken wings that have been marinating all day. Oh, I love those. In Asian, um, like soy sauce and tamar tamari and uh, sesame oil and a bunch of spices and things. And they are in the oven right now. And I'm going to serve them with fluffy white rice. What is that? That's my lawyer, Bob. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Hi, Bob. <laughs> um, we're we're in the middle of the show. You can watch us on either Instagram or Facebook Live. <laughs> That's funny. Oh. <laughs> and I'll call you back after the show. Is that okay? Great. Okay, thank you. Call back okay. if you have good news, Bob. Okay. Okay, what's that? Call back if you have good Here, news. Say, just a moment. say hello to Suzanne. She Hi, Bob. Hi, Suzanne. Hi. We're, you're on the air. You're on the air now. Call back if you have good news. Okay. <laughs> Always good news for you, Suzanne. Thank you. Thank you. I'll call you back, Bob. Thank you. Bye-bye. Say hello to your darling wife. I love her. Okay. Okay. So he took all his grandchildren to Europe, to Paris. Right. He took the whole family. Amazing. Yeah. To Paris. Yeah, you know when they're all little like that, you can do it. When they're our, our grandchildren's ages, they've we we've done we did that. We took uh, mainly we didn't we didn't go on trips. No. We had that big house. Yeah. And all those bedrooms, and they all kind of. Well, that was a trip for them. Yeah, and they and they felt like it was theirs, yeah. and they had um, such affection. The last day that we were at that house, I gave a dinner party. I think it was for your birthday, wasn't it? I don't remember. It was a dinner yes. party. Yes. It was his birthday, yes. And the next day, 
Daisy started crying, remember? Oh, she cried so much. It was a wonderful evening and a wonderful goodbye. Yeah. And that, that house was a feast for all of us. We lived well in that house. It's not about what you have <laughs> or what you do or who you are. It's about the feeling and the emotion and the, um, the bond that came, the bonding with all of us that came from, everyone would go off to their own little room. And I mean little, but they were charming. They were, um, I thought, beautifully furnished with fine antique French and my linen collection. And then, um, uh, I don't know, there's just something about those rooms and then meeting in that kitchen and then having our big family dinners in the dining room or, or a feast out in the back where we had a stage. And um, we used that house so well. And everyone had such affection for it. I was glad to see the ch children, who are not children anymore, so emotional. Made me feel good, like we, we did something right. What are you doing now? Well, I was going to show this, but it's awkward, so I'm going to let you show it. Do this one is, at a time. This is the three piece. Okay. Okay. Well, here's the mitt. I, I showed you the mitt. I loved putting the mitt on. I can't wait to take my pants off. To see my legs all dry and beautiful. This By the is, way, do you think do you think Mitt Romney's real name is Mitt, or do you think it's something and they call him Mitt? Mitz, Mitzifer? Mitsubishi? I, I don't know. It feels like I when you know. see a little baby, you go, "Let's call him Mitt." <laughs> I always see that when I hear um, people with strange names. I think, "How did your parents?" Let's call you Fredo. Or or Sergeant. Sergeant. Oh, yeah, that's right. Sergeant. This is the multi-stick, and you will love it. My granddaughters use it as lipstick. I need a little more depth than that, but I use it on my cheeks, and I use it um, sometimes on my eyelids. Sometimes I put a little on my hands. It's just kind of an all-purpose multi-stick, and it's a great color. And that's part of the three-piece tank. Yeah. yeah. And then there's this, this gives you like a little sun kiss. Yeah, it is. And then this is that beautiful, beautiful bronzing powder. I should have brought a, not used to the studio being out here, I should have brought my makeup brush. Uh -huh. You can buy a makeup brush from SuzanneSummers.com and they're fantastic. Um, this is the five piece. Far be it from me to choose what brush you want to use. I use every brush that we have. I use the medium size, the large size, I use the little eyeliner size, I, you know, it's nice. Okay, so what else is new in your life? Nothing, right? Nothing. Well, I've never been happier. There you go. That's a great accomplishment these days. Yeah, I find, I find, I'm really finding aging interesting in that um, there's a lot of stuff you don't like. That goes without saying. But the stuff that I like is that, man, do I not want things. I don't want things. I want good food and great love and a nice bed to sleep in. I don't need, I, they're talking today about the, the, um, the lottery and you went and bought, drove all over town just to buying tickets. Um, and you, would you win six dollars? Six bucks. Well, that's, kind of, that's kind of good. That's not bad. You lost ninety four. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't a total loss. I think Jill made some money. Who's listening from our office, vice president of our company, and Julie, I think made some money, or maybe not. She Jill was, made some money. Yeah. So. Um, is that your lawyer again? Hey, Allie, you want to turn your ringer off? Yeah. Oh, it's Mitch. Thank you. <laughs> Who's Mitch? Who's Mitch? Mitch was a show of Facebook Live and Instagram. Oh my gosh, he's hysterical. That's Clive Davis's son, Clive Davis. You all know who Clive Davis is. He's um, the genius. He's a genius. He's yeah. the brains, the the brains of the music world. Yeah. Anybody that you love in the music business, Clive discovered them. He has the greatest ears, ears. Yeah. ever. Yeah. Is Mitch okay? Yes. Oh, okay. 
So that was hard to get off the phone because he's not used to calling here. Yeah, well, he calls. He does? Yeah. He, he either calls or texts, but, you know, yeah. And, and by the way, Bob doesn't have Instagram or Facebook Live, and neither does Mitch. Are you kidding? <laughs> Are you kidding? Huh. Huh. Bob Kahn is our lawyer, and he's the nicest man in the business. He really is. He's so fair and so astute. It's nice. You know, everyone has lousy things to say about their lawyer. I don't. I like him. Yeah, we have only good things to say about Bob. Yeah, yeah. That hasn't always been the case with other lawyers we've had. And that's why they're others. Other, yeah. yeah. They're, not, they're not part of it. Right. Bob has lasted through the entire duration. That's true. True, lasting power. Yeah. Okay, and if you're just joining us, we have two tanning kits today. One is a three-piece, one is a five-piece. The three-piece the three piece is tanning serum, tanning mitt, healthy body glow, retail value 125, sale 90, 28% off at SuzanneSummers.com. Okay, there it is for Insta, three-piece tanning kit. And we have the five-piece tanning kit. There it is. This is for serious tanners. Tanning serum, tanning mitt, healthy body glow, desert shimmer powder, multi six sunrise, retail value two twenty five, sale one twenty five, forty four percent off at SuzanneSummers.com. And you know, if you guys um, are interested in a really easy way to get some of Suzanne's amazing tanning, try that healthy glow body lotion because oh, it's her amazing. I couldn't lotion. live without it. I love With some it. of the tanning after it's it's just like putting on lotion, and all of a sudden you go, got it, good. Yeah, yeah, it gives you a healthy glow. <laughs> the mitt, I'll tell you, you don't. Um, I don't usually have trouble reaching my feet, but since my injury, um, it it becomes a factor. Oh, have a mitt. It, it, you reach right down there, and don't don't question this. Just get this healthy glow. It's so great. This How about moisturizer that turns you a little bit tan but gives you great moisture? Crème pour le corps, bon, mean, mine. Mean, mine. <laughs> good, <laughs> Alex. It is. That's good. Okay, healthy glow body lotion. Yeah. Comes in a beautiful silver can. Okay. As do all. Almost and here's all the products. golden tanning yeah. serum. Yeah. Serum. Bronze, bronze, <laughs> uh, uh, cha 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 doré. Yeah. Okay. That's for. Uh, I noticed you never speak French to our grandsons. They are, are fluent. fluent in French. Well, one was born in Paris, and their mother, the other two were born here, and their mother had a tutor who would come in once or twice a week and teach them everything. French. Yeah. Not only speaking French, but writing French, yeah. reading French. So they are perfectly. And when you're French. with them and somebody comes in and speaks French, they switch immediately without even thinking about it. Right. They're like, it's, it's a fluent thing. You like said, when I'm going to speak French to someone, I have to like gear up and think of the words and then go, uh, je me. Je <laughs> <laughs> well, you said to one, of, yeah, you said to one of our grandsons. I remember a few years ago when they were very, one of them was very young. You said, "How come you don't speak to me in French?" And he said, "Well, uh, it's because you speak English." Except he didn't have an accent in English. Oh, that's right. He remember, did. he said, well, "Well, you no, speak English." No, but Zion had an accent. Remember? What? When? Because he was born in Paris. He and, was still living in Paris, but yeah. he was speaking English. And yeah. He had a slight accent, and he was fascinated with your rear end. Yeah, that doesn't sound right, though. I want to touch your butt. I want to touch no, your butt. No, Zion. Yeah, right. No. <laughs> He's darling. Yeah. Well, I saw a picture of him yesterday. He's so darling. I miss him. Yeah. He's been over in Paris for a month. This is the kind of family we have. Everybody's think, everywhere except us. Bruce think, and Caroline are leaving for Italy soon. And um, Bruce is going on one of his I need to be alone hikes first. <sighs> but he always comes back. So, <laughs> And then he's meeting the girls uh, at the uh, catamaran. And then they're going to uh, go up and down the Mediterranean, which we know quite well. You might even get to Libya. Libya? Yeah. 
Oh, I don't think. No, we're, we're just going on the Amalfi Coast. Yeah, you're not going to go to Libya. Yeah, well, we're, remember not, we're not when going we, up we, the Coast. We're just going no, on we, the Amalfi Coast. We've never been to Libya. Where, where didn't you want to go? Libya. Yeah. I did not want to go. I know. But I, uh, but we were in the the uh, Mediterranean, and right over there was Italy, and over here was. Um, um, you didn't want to go because you said I'll never come back. Well, no, they're always at war there. Yeah. There's a civil war. I don't know what's going on yeah. there now, but I never realized the proximity. You know, you don't really understand geography until you've been there. Yeah. Like I know everywhere France is, and I can get myself anywhere in France because we've driven it so many times, and parts of Italy. Not as much as I'd like to. I've been looking at pictures. I don't know if you've been there, Caroline, of, um, where's everyone getting married right now? Um, uh, George Clooney has a house there. Oh, Lake, Lake, Lake Como. Como. Yeah. Have you been there? Yeah. What's from, that was the first time I went to Italy for Stephanie's wedding. Was oh, right, 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 right. Stunning. Right. I have two friends who have daughters getting married in Italy this week. One this week and one next week. Who's getting married? Um, uh, Leslie's daughter and um, the um, Leslie's daughter is getting married. No, Les. Oh, oh and, okay. Um, okay, got it. And the other one is Janelle and Larry. Oh. Their daughter, because daughters have now figured out I could get a hundred thousand dollar wedding just by asking Daddy. Oh, they're not a hundred thousand anymore. They're not. <laughs> Not if it's not if they're going all the way there. Really? It's amazing what people are doing for these. I mean, you know, listen, you can throw any any size and price wedding, and they're all beautiful. But these, um, you know, the destination weddings, you're kind of hosting a whole weekend. It's usually like a three day event. Mm. Oh, oh, a lot of destination weddings. Wow. Well, we hosted a a, uh, a seven-day event with 14 people in Italy, and it didn't cost it didn't no. cost anywhere near that. No, but times have yeah, changed. Yeah, but you had like eight people. Pardon? You had like eight people. No, we had 14. Yes, yeah, but, but we didn't not, pay for like everybody's way. way on. We didn't pay their transportation. No, I don't think anybody pays for transportation. Do they pay for transportation, Caroline? I don't think so. No. 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 They pay not for usually. usually pay for the rooms and the rooms food and, food. and the party. No, not the rooms. They don't pay for the rooms either. No. no so no. what are they? What are? What? What's the money going for? I don't know. You throw the parties. You throw a rehearsal dinner, and, and they usually invite everyone who's traveled there. So instead of it just being the bridal party, it's everyone who's coming to the wedding. Then you throw the wedding, then you throw a brunch, then you, like, sometimes people throw a day party mm-hmm. as well. It gets, it's it's usually, like, three or four parties. We should be in wow. this business. I know. And it's the whole, and it's everyone who's coming. So, you know, wow. maybe, let's say you have less people because it's a destination wedding, so maybe you have 75 people instead of 200 people. Wow. Um, but then, you know, it's several parties. I mean, they're all so... They're all so much fun. Like when you go, it's really fun. How come we're not you're invited there to with those? A, you know, Pardon? a small group of people. How come we're not invited to those? Uh, like we have friends who just their daughters got married in Ward, Jamaica. Yeah. Well, you know, the thing is, I'm glad because I, I don't want to go anywhere. <laughs> I don't. I'm really happy right here. <laughs> And you want to eat dinner at three? I'm happy at here. I'm ha- in Do you realize we ate dinner yesterday at four? At four, yeah. Not three. That was all right. Yeah. That was all right. And, you know, we slept really great. Well, Tonight we're eating at five. Yeah, right. And you'll want it. Uh, well, I love I love those. Uh, I'm now trying to entice you to eat dinner at a reasonable hour for both of us. Yeah. I'd like to eat at six. He'd like to eat at three. So in the middle, we go to four, four thirty, five, maybe. If you, it's know, a show you know, there are people uh, who are with us right now on Instagram and Facebook <laughs> and we we do not plan what we're going to talk about three no, really? times a week. You can probably tell that. Okay, <laughs> we don't plan that at yeah, all. We want we want what we do to be so organic normal. and so normal, normal that it's just like peeking yeah. into our life. And right. we're happy to invite you. And um, whatever we're talking about right now, we would have talked about whether you were there or not. So I'm glad you're there. And I like your comments. So. 
coming away. Yeah. Well, Kimber Sisson said Prague was so beautiful my first trip. Okay, I remember there was a period when the... Uh, Everyone was going to Prague. Yeah, or Portugal. Yeah, but it was Prague. I remember, um, I remember Patrick Turai. Patrick Turai. He, because he, he had all those people who came to his restaurant, and he got so many people to go to Prague that it became, like, the destination place. Well, I remember after the Soviet Union crashed, Yeah. that a friend of ours, I can't remember his name, uh, a French guy, and uh, he called us from Prague, and he said, you got to come here. You can buy a 10-room apartment on the Blah Blah Square for $50,000. And I thought, wow, what a deal. But you got to be in Prague. <laughs> you probably would, would have been happy today if you had bought that. No, I, w I wouldn't. I have hey. nightmares about owning property that's uh, on the other side of an ocean. Remember, we were, we were offered to trade. We had that little uh, beach house. And there were these people oh, yeah, 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 yeah. that owned a fabulous rooftop uh, penthouse. It was penthouse. No, it was bank. Four stories high in Paris. Yeah. And they they wanted to trade us. Okay. And I remember I had sort of a a, a, a nightmare, half awake and half asleep, laying in bed and thinking the phone. We're going to own that thing in Paris, and the phone's going to ring, and we're going to hear someone saying, "Hello, uh, Monsieur Amel." Uh, the place is flooded. Uh, <laughs> we do not know how it happened, but what would you like to do? And I'm 15 hours away. And you right? don't want to do anything. Yeah. So I thought, okay, we don't want to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Monsieur Amel. What were you going to say, Caroline? Guess who I saw at the grocery store today? Who? You want to guess or you want me to just tell Okay, uh, let's say. Is male, male or female? Or female? male. Uh, male. Famous or not famous? Not famous. Oh. That makes it harder. Yeah. Um, Not one famous. of my kids, grown up? Yes. <gasps> oh, Christopher? Um, who? No. Who? who? Keep, keep going. You, you just had a, a pretty important Cody? question, and I answered yes. Think Cody? about the question. Is Cody... I'm remembering their show names repeat, more. Repeat your question. Uh, was he one of my kids? One of my kids, grown up. And it was a that male. That was the question. So it had to be, it had to be Christopher you. or Josh or um, no. the teenager, I can't remember his name right now, who got shot. Think about your words. Your words were one of my kids, grown up. One of my kids grown up. I'll, I'll play the Jeopardy theme. No, so, Alan, you need to guess. I have One no idea. One of my kids grown up. This yeah, is not I, hard. You guys are making this so much harder than it is. <laughs> and now, Maybe you are. Now, by the, by <laughs> the way. And, and think, think literally about what you said. Did you see one of my kids grown up? Yeah. So once, once the answer comes up, are we going to go? Wow, you yes, saw you Marlon Brando. <laughs> no, one of your kids. One of your so it has kids. to be either Christopher, Josh, or... Oh, Pat my gosh. Patrick guys. Duffy. What? No, one of your kids. One of my kids. I'm going to say it real fast. Maybe it sounds like a swear word. One of my kids. Okay. I don't uh, know. <laughs> Bruce. Bruce is your only kid. Yeah. Not Bruce. Then it must be Camellia. No, that's a girl. No. You were very close when you said Bruce, because it is a boy. It is so a it's got to be Cody. Alan, you know this. Do I know? Bruce, one of your kids, grown up, and it's a male. There's only one other. Steven? Yes! Oh! oh. oh. <laughs> you saw Steven today? I saw Steven at the grocery store. How bizarre. Alan's what? son. That's Alan's son. Yeah, what's, what? what store? Edible Foods. That's probably why he didn't call you back. <laughs> oh, wow. He was at the grocery store in the produce section with me. What did he have in his shopping cart? A lot of produce. Oh. Yeah, I didn't look carefully, but... Well, he, he eats very healthy. He's very health-oriented. <sighs> 
So do we all. This is a healthy eating family. Yeah, it's great. I, I feel so good about the fact that years and years and years ago, we decided without commiserating as a family, everyone started eating healthy, organic food. And it makes a difference. I know my healing is taking a long time, but imagine if I had been eating crap. I don't eat crap, ever. My doctors all go, well, you know, if, if you weren't injured, the rest of you is operating at 100%. So um, it's got to be the food. How could it not be the food? Uh, if you put sugar into a gas tank of a Maserati or any car, uh, you'd burn up the engine. It just wouldn't work. Um, what you put into your body is fuel, and your fuel, the better the quality of the fuel, the better you operate as a human being. When you're, when you're in the store and you're going to make a choice between this or that, that's the I shouldn't and this is the I should, go to the, the I shoulds. More, try to do it more often than not, and I think you will see that um, it really pays off gives you strength, you, your body reacts differently. I take ashwagandha, which we have in our um, arsenal, and uh, man, is that good for my muscles. I don't know if it'd be good for yours, because I'm not allowed to say anything, but it sure is good for mine. Well, you're developing muscles, which yeah. is great. How are you doing, Caroline? What do you weigh, 100 now? <laughs> um, I, I'm doing great. I'm I am at the weight I want to be, and I'll be how much good. have you lost? Seventeen pounds. Mm. But wow. some of that was like some of that at the uh, you know I put on just like a random five pounds that didn't really count. So I, I would say I've lost like a solid twelve pounds. Wow. Yeah. Don't right, you right. have envy, everybody listening? Right, you look yeah, great. Significant. I saw you, you on your um, after show the other day, and you looked really great. Congratulations. Well, That's not easy. And what are you doing? I'm just going to uh, show everyone what Stephen looks like. And uh, he's single. Okay. <laughs> Here's Stephen. And Stephen. picky. And very picky. There he is. He's handsome with a magnificent body. Okay. He's See, it runs in the family. They wear sunglasses. Yeah. But Stephen looks better with sunglasses. <laughs> there he is. Yeah, it's hard to do here. Yeah. There we are. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he'll hate that I showed his picture. No, he won't. No, he won't. He likes to pretend he hates it. <laughs> Everybody loves attention. Okay. Not everyone. No. No, some people are introverts and do not like attention. Oh. Yeah, that's me. Oh, please. Yeah. <laughs> oh, please. You hate attention. No, I don't hate attention. No, I don't hate attention. No, but it is. You don't need it or crave it, but when you get right. it, you like it. Yeah. Yeah. It's fine. Yes. Yeah. But you're right. I don't crave it. No. You're very emotionally healthy about that. You're well, very emotionally healthy about um, what you have achieved and... Uh, the success that you had has been extraordinary. And you're at a place in your life where you go, yeah, that was that, that was great, I was good at it, and I really liked it, but you, you don't live in the past. You don't live in I used to be's. Right. Because you're more about who you are right now. Well, I find I, you, I, I learn a lot from you. Thank you. Well, you know, I've had thousands of hours of therapy. <laughs> this is Alan lying. <laughs> He likes to lie, you know that. Actually, I had one week of therapy. Yeah. Uh, we, it was the family therapy. Yeah. And it was an incredible week. Yes, yeah, life changing. And I, I learned all the rules, and it set me up for the rest of my life. And then I had a couple you of. Need a, you need a couple of tune ups. Well, I had a. What do you mean? Along the way, you've needed to tune up a little bit. Oh, I had, like, like any like any fine instrument, you need to tune it. Yeah, I had two one hour yeah two one hour sessions with a therapist, mm -hmm. but that's it. That's the only What's day. interesting about our therapy is um, uh, I found my therapist through my best friend, and um, and then I was so impressed by her 
because she didn't waste any time. We got to it and we got over it and I had maybe a few sessions and I didn't go back again. But then Bruce, I could tell needed at that time, so I turned Bruce onto her and then Bruce turned Caroline onto her and then I turned Leslie onto her and she now knows, and I say to her, because I, I have a, an appointment with her next week, because I haven't talked to her in about a year, I always say the same thing. I envy you. You know every single thing, intimate detail. You know all the things that don't make any sense. You know what they are, uh, and, and you can't talk about it to anybody. And she well, never she, gives away no, anything she, on anybody. No, no, but she knows everyone's version. Yeah, that's even more interesting. Maybe a departure. Yeah, but that's even more interesting yeah. that you see it this way, but I see it that way. Well, the most interesting part, I, I mean, I actually went to her. Yeah. You've actually never seen her, have you? Not really. I went to her once for my one-hour one one sessions. And what was really interesting yeah. is that uh, she was naked. And I said, uh, This is Alan what? lying. She He's said, lying it's important again. you don't come in here with clothes on so that there's no pretense about who you are or what you are and what you do or what you have. So I took my clothes off. Oh, yeah. And the two of us sat there for one hour. It wasn't an hour. It was like 50 minutes. I uh -huh. think it was 10 minutes between sessions. Isn't that great? And then, and then I left and I forgot to put my clothes on. Oh. There was someone in the waiting room. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this rings true, Alan. Well. You're a good storyteller. This would not make a good movie. Oh, I think it would make a very good movie. No, depending I Depending on the casting. Yeah, who would you cast? Well, if I said that, then you would know, you'd know something about me mm. that I've never revealed to you. Oh. Yeah, and I'm not sure I want to do that publicly. Now yeah. you got me curious. Well, I you thought have to, I know everything. No, about no, me. but who? Now, if I was going to produce a movie, you would want to and be. Everyone's she was still be, alive and young. He's going to be Lorraine. naked. So let's say it's a, it's a, it's a, a head session in a circle. Okay. And uh, there are 10 people and two therapists, and everybody's naked. Oh, okay. great. That sounds great. Who would I cast? Um, starting with women. Oh, really? Who? Oh, really? Yeah, starting with women. Um, five so women, Sophia five Loren. Yes, yeah, so, so it's Sophia Loren, yeah. In her heyday. Yeah. Um, that one who was on your talk show, the blonde singer, you liked her. What was her name? Nancy Ames. Yes, okay. Yeah. They're all kind of the same, even though Sophia Loren doesn't look anything like Aunt Bridget Nancy. Bridget Bardot. Oh, Bridget Bardot. When I had my special, Suzanne Summers and 50,000 Soldiers at uh, Ramstein Air Force Base in Germany, he offered Bridget Bardot $150,000. In cash. In cash to pick her up on her little island outside of Saint-Tropez in a military helicopter, fly her over to the hangar where the show was going live, drop her down on the stage, have her walk out on the stage in front of 50,000 soldiers, which I'll tell you, if you ever get a chance, do it, and uh, wave and throw kisses and get back in the helicopter and go home. $150,000, she said no. Yeah, she said, wait, I, uh, I have a lunch date today. So. <laughs> I wonder if she was afraid, knowing women, the psyche of women, that she didn't live up to the image that you had, that all men had. You know, she was quite a bit older then. And so maybe well, dropping out of the helicopter, when you're known as the greatest sex symbol in America at, uh, in your 20s. Well, in and the world. now you're, she was in, in her world. 60s. What? The greatest sex symbol in the world. In the world, yeah. Bridget Bardot, yeah. Like, I mean, huge. Yeah. Okay, let me see when she was born, because this was in 1983. Before, before women could get plastic surgery and fillers to look like her. That's true. You know that it's, it's a great that women have access to so much plastic surgery now, but you never know. There's something very interesting about watching a face become the face it was destined to be. And um, there's the good and the bad of it. What do you think, Caroline? I um, I agree. I think people should you know do what they want to do and enjoy what they're able to do, and it doesn't always go <laughs> the way people think. Oh no! It's I know. I'm going I, to. I was looking at this woman the other day who's uh, died, uh, and we all know who the family is, and 
She started out so pretty. And I knew her when I was at HSN. And then, you know, you got too much money and too much time and too much filler and too much this and too much that. And um, she it took away her beauty and she was so beautiful. And here she was so doing people, it. People are just mean about aging in general. Like yeah. if they say, you know, you should age gracefully and then you age gracefully and people say, ah, oh, you look old. Yeah, I know. And then, so, so really what people want is for women not to age. And or if, to age if, if in a have, way, if you're like, having work done, that it should be invisible. I'm hoping because um, I have the face I have, and a few of you have mentioned that I'm aging here, which I know, and I'm, I'm not saying I won't do it. I might like clean this up down here, but there's a part of me that's feeling like uh, we're all in this together, and so if I am aging the way that I feel. Um, makes everyone feel better. I'm not doing it for you. I'm doing it for me. That it makes what I call our brand stronger. Does that make sense? Well, it does. It does. Yeah. 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 I don't wake up in the morning and look at my face and go, oh, my God. I don't. I actually like the way I look. My cheeks are, my skin is good from all the skin care that I use and the hormones. Hormones are the game changer. Oh, my God. The... The difference, and my sister was saying this too. My sister was going to the doctor the other day, and he said something about, well, I look at you, and you look so good. I don't know what to do with an 83-year-old woman. And I, I said, that's because she doesn't eat right. She doesn't eat bad. She doesn't eat like we eat. She has been on hormones since I started writing the books about them. And I told her, God, just do this. Just do this. And... Um, you know, aging is about worn out parts and what wears out first are your hormones, then your nutrients and minerals and then other things. But those are the main things. And through lab work, you, you can determine what your deficiencies are hormonally, nutritionally, minerally. And so a good doctor, the ones that I'm setting you up with at live, what is it? Live health? It's livehealth.com backslash Suzanne. Okay. It's complicated. Livehealth.com backslash Suzanne. Okay. Anyway, um, you go to the right doctor with your lab work, and he goes, hmm, you're deficient here. Let's In hormones, you need the right ratio of progesterone to estrogen and testosterone. For men, men need to have more testosterone than estrogen. Yes, they have estrogen. And you put everything back. It's like putting Humpty Dumpty back together again. You feel great. You, ha you exude a youthful energy without looking all done up. And I think it's, I think it, I think it's the ultimate um, surgery, uh, natural surgery, of putting back what you had in your youth without deteriorating. Without hormones, you're going to deteriorate. It's, 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 hormones are the internal messengers they are. They carry all the information, but the thyroid, always oh, stay on top of your thyroid. Uh, make sure that your thyroid is um, not low or high. You want to be just right, and you need to, the right doctor to know what is too low or what is too high. You need to be right in the middle. Why? Because the thyroid is the orchestra leader that tells estrogen what to do, and progesterone what to do, and testosterone what to do, and DHEA what to do, and pregnenolone what to do. And now all the, the hormones get their messages and they go, oh, okay, I know what to do. But if the thyroid isn't working right, there's no one telling the different hormones what to do. And so they go, well, I know how to do what I'm supposed to do, but I don't know how much of it. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll throw it in here. That's how you get a high estrogen or low progesterone. That's why you start feeling... Uh, crazy inside because it's about the ratio. It's, hormone balance is about balance of the hormone ratio. For men, they need this much, much testosterone to this much estrogen. That's, that's what keeps them... That's why Alan looks so good. He's got just the right ratio. Women are in reverse. We need this much estrogen and this much um, testosterone in, in the middle there is progesterone. When you don't have enough progesterone... Um, the the cycle of your of your you know twenty eight days, on the twelfth day you make the most estrogen you're going to make, and on the thirteenth day in comes the progesterone, and on the thirteenth day so the estrogen pour, the progesterone pours in, 
and the estrogen drops, like plummets. But if, if your balance isn't right, you keep building lining and building lining and building lining, and then you have breakthrough bleeding, and, and now you're in trouble because you're completely out of whack. I could talk to you for two hours about this. That is what has made aging, besides Alan, and I mean that, besides my great love in my life and my family, that's what's made aging acceptable for me. And, and then, you know, God sends me this, I'm going to break your body in half, and uh, let's see how you do. And I never had a day of despair. I've never been depressed. I wake up every morning, and Alan says, how are you today? And I said, I've never been happier. And that's true. I really have never been happier. I'm so lucky. I, I get to sleep in a nice bed, and I get to make us a nice dinner, and we get to have this love affair. We, we danced a little bit last night, which we usually do all the time, but because of my broken body. But it's the hormones that have allowed me to put, put myself back together again. I, if you don't know anything about hormones, I, I will highly suggest... You get any one of them, but the most recent hormone book is I'm Too Young for This. I wrote that because every woman who's in hormonal balance says, oh, I'm too young for that. And I always go, no, you're not. You can be uh, uh, of age when you're in your 30s or 40s or 50s or 60s. But if you're in your 60s and you're not on hormones, you're suffering. I can tell you that. You're not sleeping through the night. You're peeing too much. You don't have a sex drive. You're sweating at night. You're, you're having all the, the seven dwarves of menopause living in your house, and it's unpleasant, and it's hard for the people that you share the house with because you are suffering, and when you are suffering, the rest of the people in the house start suffering. So um, it's, it, it also, you get to be your beautiful self, and you age, but it's okay because you don't look weird aging. So... You know how much I love people's names. Yeah, I do. I do. I don't make fun of them. I did it once, no. and I, no. have, I have to apologize to the woman. I'm sorry I did it. This name. This is a great name, Aurora Hooker. Hmm. Okay. Leave it alone. That leave it alone. It's a great name, and uh, my guess is that she had to learn how to fight in <laughs> high school. <laughs> Probably as much as I'm a whore. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> huh. well, is there something? Aurora is a beautiful name. What is? Aurora, yeah. Aurora, Aurora. such a pretty name. And yeah. When put with Borealis, yeah. Oh. Well, um, and P.S. Uh, livehealth.com slash Suzanne. There's only one. There's only one slash, so it doesn't. You don't have to say forward or backward. You can just say slash Suzanne. Thank you. Because yeah. every time Alan easier. says that, my dyslexia kicks in. I go, what do you mean this way? You mean that I've way? never seen it the other yeah. way. I've There's seen, only one. I think there used one. to be on HTML, but now these days it's it's just one. Okay. All right. So there you go. Okay. Okay. And Iron Iron Vucci said, I could listen about hormones all night. And Suzanne could talk about hormones all night. She knows more about hormones. She actually did a seminar. Uh, one of our go-to doctors um, in Belgium uh, asked Suzanne, he, he has a couple of organizations with about 6,000 uh, MDs who are members, and uh, he asked Suzanne to do a lecture for these doctors on bioidentical hormones. That's how much she knows about hormones. Well, uh, I know how to simplify it. I, you know, one of the advantages of interviewing so many doctors over my 27 books and my career is they don't know how to communicate as a general rule. There are a few of them who are glib and eloquent and wonderful. Um, but most of them talk in a monotone and they talk in initials and I have to go, first I, I record the whole thing and I ask provocative questions, I hope, in, in the uh, interview. Then when it's over and I get it all typed into a manuscript, then I send it back to them for their approval, but it's only the first stage. And I go, you know, in paragraph one, page one, and we've got, you know, 90, 100 pages to go. Did you mean when you said that, that this happens, or did you mean this happens? And then they go, no, 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 that means that happens when this happens. And, and eventually I, I pull it out of them 
so that I, I, when I reach that aha moment of, oh, okay, okay, then I know we're all going to understand it. And that's how I write my books. I didn't go to college. And for many, many years, I was um, insecure about the fact that I didn't go to college. And then I thought, I've done pretty well for someone who hasn't gone to well, college. You know, you know, what's interesting, I think most of the uh, heads of the Fortune 500 companies were college dropouts. Mm. Uh, Bill Gates dropped out of college. That's right, he did. The guy who created uh, Twitter dropped out of college. Google dropped out of college. I mean, so many, so many people, okay, and leaders, because what they realized was they were more interested in getting their lives going and watching their vision materialize rather than, you know, sitting in college for four years or five years or whatever. I wish I could say I was that smart. Life took plus charge. I, plus, I was, a, I was a dropout. You were a dropout, yeah. too. You're one of the smartest people I know. But life for me... What, you, what, what do you mean one, one of? What, 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 what is that one of thing? Uh, you know anyone smarter than me? It's, I'll give you time, okay? I don't think so, actually. <laughs> no, I'm just, I, I know you are, but I don't think so. I think that you uh, have wisdom. You have great wisdom. Well, actually, uh, Bruce actually. Yeah, when Bruce was uh, in, in a therapy of sorts, this, this came out. What did he say about you? Well, yeah, I'd rather, I, I feel yeah. awkward. Yeah, well, that, well. Yeah. That but you, it was highly complimentary. Yeah, yeah, Methuselah, or? No, no, no. No, no. Moses. Moses, Moses, right, right. You know, when I was in Israel, and those of you who read the Bible, we went to the Garden of Gethsemane. It, it moved me and it grabbed me. Um, because I have always <laughs> identified with Mary Magdalene. And she was so profoundly sorry that she washed Jesus' hair with her feet, with her hair. I don't know, when I went to the Garden of Gethsemane, was I her? Because I sure identified with, um, we've all made bad choices in our life, we've all done stupid things, but... It was an act of, of forgiveness, and, and um, uh, I just identified. I have a picture of it in my photo album on, on my phone, and that picture stops me. It's just, just a tree. It stops me every time. So, mm -hmm. I'm not going to say this woman's last name. Her first name is Val, mm -hmm. and she'll know who she is. Mm -hmm. She said, my doctor said, no hormone replacement, chance for cancer high. Lost an ovary at 32. I've been through hell with perimenopause, pre full blown menopause. I'm peeing a lot at night, trouble sleeping, still get hot flashes. Okay? I suggest that you go to livehealth.com backslash Suzanne. And may I tell you what and I you'll wrote have, about? You'll have a cons consultation. Yes, have the consultation. But may I tell you what I wrote about in several of my books? Uh, um, doctors are down on what they're not up on. You know what I mean? And so um, we were meant to have hormonal balance. I'm talking about the ratio of um, when everything is all is well, when everything's in balance, you feel great, right? You sleep through the night, you have a sexual drive, you're not sweating, you're not uh, bitchy, you're not itchy. Itchy. The itch has got me first. Oh, my God. I, that's what got me finally to the doctor. I couldn't stop itching. my. I would itch my leg till it bled. Now, a doctor who says no more hormones for you may not have thought it all the way through. Here, if it were me, and I'm not saying I'm a doctor, I'm not, not giving advice, but um, why did you lose an ovary at that age? What was in balance that created that? The brain is very smart. The brain has one, excuse me, one job to do, and the job is perpetuation of the species. So... Um, we have our hormones so that we'll have a cycle and then we'll, we, we, you know, either make a baby on the 12th day or we um, don't and it plummets and then the progesterone comes in. Here's what I didn't finish before. Estrogen is carcinogenic. Surprise, right? But nature is so beautiful. Progesterone is anti-carcinogenic. So when you hit the 12th day of your cycle and you're making more estrogen than you've made all month, 
and you're the horniest, and oh, the full moon is out on the 12th day. If you don't make a baby that day, then this drops and then comes progesterone, which is anti-carcinogenic. So high estrogen is only a problem if the progesterone doesn't come in. That's why me and so many women, I believe, well, this is my diagnosis. Why did I get a breast cancer at 50? I wasn't making enough progesterone. When I look back on my body and I was puffy and, and sweaty and I used to go to bed and, oh, please let me sleep tonight. I wasn't making enough progesterone and voila, I got breast cancer. Is it the reason? No one can prove it, but the, I, you know how you know in your gut? And so that doctor who told you that didn't know the whole hormonal story, I, I, I figure. Because yeah, and, he, yeah. and I'm just going to just play the devil's advocate. devil's advocate side. There are some specific medical situations where people's doctors do know a lot about hormones and they still don't believe that hormone could be right for you based on your individual case. So it's important to listen to both sides. That's all. Thank you for saying that. So Aurora Hooker said, Alan, you made my day mentioning my name. Mm -hmm. Aurora Hooker is quite a name. That's why I go by, are you ready? <laughs> Tootie. Like Tootie Foodie. <laughs> Aurora Tootie? Aurora Tootie? Yeah. She just goes by Tootie. That's so cute. Tootie Foodie. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's great. Well, guess what? What? The time. Don't the last Whoops. The best horses don't last What's that? Who's that? Oh. Oh. It's a, all of a sudden, a woman kissing a horse. Oh, God, I love those. Okay, turn it off now. Okay. Thank you very much for saying that, lady. Um, the, on Facebook, where you see reels, where it shows animal videos, I could sit all day and watch those videos. But if any of you ever wanted, uh, like, an hour of hormones, I do know a lot. I don't know why. It made total, after writing so many books, I had what I call in therapy, in any kind of uh, education, aha moments where I went, oh. Well, look at, look at the teachers you had. You had these top of the, the hill top of the doctors, line. okay? I used my celebrity for the better good because I was able to call up the best and the brightest and they would take my call. Whereas if I was Joe Schmo, they probably wouldn't. So um, oh. that, that's been great. And... Um, I love talking about hormones. I could talk about them all day. I think they're so important for us to know. And they don't teach it in med school. They just don't teach it. The most important messenger in our body, besides our, well, thyroid's a hormone. The hormone thyroid talks to every other hormone. And you have another um, uh, hormone right below your thyroid called the thymus. And you gotta keep that strong because that's your immune system. You know that tennis court, I always say that the length of our GI tract has the mucus around it. Well, the, the signals are coming from the thymus. Okay, so Tina said, I got into a fight with my doctor because he said hormones cause cancer. I said, I've been on them for 30 plus years and I will never stop. Suzanne Summers gave me my life back. Mm. Wow. Wow. Yeah, I get too. Well, we'll schedule a hormone show soon, yeah. guys. Um, but today we are we're wrapping up our golden hour with our golden girl, Suzanne. I'm yes. going to do an after show. If you guys have questions, we're going to talk more about tanning products or anything else that you like. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, there's so much more to say, so let's do it again. Enjoy Caroline tonight, and I will see you uh, Friday. Friday. Bye.